Hey, Dog Check Guru here, joined by the Gun Wrangler, who's got himself a fancy new plane since last time we played. I would not call it fancy. I would call it the opposite. I mean, is it covered in rust and falling apart? Sure, but it's got a really intricate design. Whereas I'm still in the flying V. Yes, there is that. It's got three engines back there. That thing's, well, not badass per se, but definitely headed in the right direction. All right, so uh, now we've got to go talk to a guy and start a quest, uh, get this plot going. But while we're doing that, we're going to discuss something a little more important. We're getting caught up on Travelers before Season 3 starts. I know. I'm so excited because it was the best not expanse sci-fi <laughs> on tv i gotta say that that second season opener uh they dealt with that fast uh, yeah they I moved mean, right into it well yeah i mean i, I just want to say i guess the only way um uh oh so we gotta go nice all right so let's let's go do this it's it's weird because i guess dismiss sounds bad but i guess we have to press dismiss to uh, start the mission, I think, or was I? We have to, to be dismissive be of the mission. That's all. Okay. No, it's weird. Oh no, I just had to grab the mission object. All right, that's embarrassing. So let's go put in a comm signal booster. But yeah, like when they got captured by the FBI, uh, my response was, well, I guess they're just going to turn all those F. They're going to steal all those FBI people's bodies. Because that's the only... But then I thought... That was yeah, literally but, the only way out. No, it was the only way out from a writing standpoint. But my first thought was... But yeah, but would that even work if the FBI has reported what's going on to everybody around? And I guess the answer was the FBI had not reported what was going on to everyone around. So that is that is how they got out of that one. Uh, European Dead Zone. Nice. All right. so that's, It's uh, just like real life. <laughs> well, no, I mean, that can happen. Yeah, that, that can, they can get disconnected because they, uh, they worry about secrecy and worry about doing things according to their, uh, the way they're supposed to. So There is an entire show about how that led to utter disaster. That's true. It's called In the Shadow of Two Towers. And it's no, a, it's called The Looming Tower. Oh, The Looming Tower. Sorry, In the Shadow of Two Towers was the, another book about the thing. Yes, uh, it was... But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, same, sorry, same idea where it's basically the same idea. it's all about how screwed up uh, intelligence practices caused a disaster. Yeah. yeah. Including the USS Cole and uh, yeah. USS arguably... Cole, the embassy bombings and probably 9/11. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> just it's, because it's rough. the CIA didn't want to talk to the FBI cuz they were jealous yeah. at who could do understandably um, the FBI does not have the best track record for literally anything. No, no, they have uh, they have issues with secrecy. They, I mean, the, actually, they do have a good job in a uh, few things. Like, if you need someone to get rid of like uh, racists, they're actually really good at that. Uh, if you um, need someone to get I'm rid not of so them all, sure. The last they, time they they had a really big incident with the racists, they shot a dude carrying a dangerous baby. Yeah, uh, it wasn't great that they shot that dude carrying a baby, 100%. But honestly, don't don't hang out with white supremacists and bad things aren't going to happen to you. Just to Clearly, you have not been to northern, like, the Pacific Northwest. Oh, yeah. No, I, I do understand how bad it was after Ruby Ridge. But at the same time, it's like... Seriously, don't hang out with Nazis, and the FBI won't try to, you know, blackmail... And the FBI shouldn't have blackmailed him into turning on the Nazis, but, you know, the FBI won't if you weren't already hanging out with Nazis. Do you realize that he was hanging out with Nazis? Because there were the only because... people who lived anywhere near there? Yeah, of course. Yeah, there were literally the only people who lived within any amount of miles. And, uh, and yeah, again, is... maybe maybe take that into consideration before moving there, you know? <laughs> Like, yeah, Jack oh, Ruby just really wanted to be left alone, I and know. it didn't work out great. It really didn't. Apparently abandoning society, not as easy as you want. So now that the FBI agents are all just uh, taken over by, uh, by travelers, who, have, uh, who pointedly, and I really like this, have no idea what they're doing, 
apparently the world has gone to hell since our characters left because uh what do you call it 20 new travelers arrive including replacing eric mccormick's partner and guess what they kind of don't know what they're doing they are really lost in the 21st century yeah like... and they're supposed to have years of training and simulators and be ready to go and this guy can't drive a car there's also stuff Ooh. like they they went through that same meal withdrawal where they're like, uh, hey guys, is this made from an animal? Yeah. Uh, except this guy seemed co totally down with the donuts, which I was surprised by. Well, he seemed to enjoy them because I mean, yeah. I guess they don't have sugar in the future. Yeah, I guess they would be pretty delicious to someone who only ate horrible things in the future. But yeah, <laughs> nothing it's, but uh... algae. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Uh, no, it's it's interesting because you've got this uh, you got this whole different version of the future that people are coming from, and it makes me wonder what was the and I mean this is going to segue into the plot of the first episode, which we really need to discuss. Yes. What was the future like that Enrico Colantoni Tony came from? Well, he was Traveler Zero Zero One. Exactly. So it was pretty bad. No, no, and that's what why I they sent him back literally to, to die. Nine, to die in 9-11. <laughs> which, oof! That was, uh, that was fun. But, they went um, right into the deep end. They, they did. But what, what bothered me about it, though, is... What I'm saying is the, uh, the changes have really messed up and completely wrapped around what, uh, what Eric McCormick and the... Uh, to the point where the future, now that there's this rogue human faction... I mean, we'll talk about it in a later episode, seemingly just going back and stealing bodies to escape from the future, not with any plan or anything, just because they want out, right? So yeah. now that there's that, now that there's an extra faction doing that and somehow getting a hold of the technology without control, uh, without the technology having control of the, um, the, the director, which makes me wonder something. All right, and this is going to sound crazy, and I'm... I have no expectation this theory will turn out to be right. So, now we know something they did to stop the meteor, right, allowed that, uh, allowed that extra dome not to have a cave in, right? Yeah. And my question is, had the director, and this is seems to be causing a lot of the problems, uh, because this second rogue faction not only almost had the, almost destroyed the director, right, but is now seemingly just fleeing the future, right? No plan, no nothing. Just just flee the future, live out the rest of your life in the past. You know who ca who cares about the future? Who cares about the past? I'm me, so you know I get to live in this paradise compared to where everybody else uh, lives. I wouldn't actually call it like there's the um pro director faction there's the anti director faction and there's people who are just like you know what i like not being cold all the time not wearing oh, yeah. burlap and not eating <laughs> algae so you know what yeah what the hell fuck this shit we're done we yeah. out <laughs> and what interests me and i know this is going to sound a little weird but it's i wonder if something that got done in the early changes the post 911 changes actually caused that dome cave in in the future that then later got undone like did the did everybody get killed in the dome to stop uh oh can we go through here no oh yeah of course i just have to open the door uh like to stop a rebellious faction that's now back because like eric mccormack and company are in the three thousands of uh of travelers right no well Eric McCormack is. Oh, no, he's... Yeah, Eric McCormack is, and all of his friends are, because they all no. came at the same time. No, um, the engineer, the, yeah. the young kid, yes. is 862. Yes, but that's because he joined the program much, much earlier. Yeah. But I'm saying, the they, I'm saying they're numbered roughly based on when they were trained up to come back, except in his case, which is why when his friend gets taken over, he's well into the 4,000s. Yeah. My point is, there's roughly 3,000 other travelers on Earth before Eric McCormack gets there. And I think that's, that's a fair assessment of the, 
of the kind of peop the kind of tro troops they're dealing with. Three thousand people is enough to make some pretty amazing changes, and I know some of them are just getting thrown in jail because we've learned about that in the uh, the, the Randy director from really Monk episode. They really don't mind throwing people away for some reason. Oh yeah, well no, because I I think the director's got this. Uh, you have to. Oh no, responding is restricted. That sucks. Uh, the director has this attitude where anyone can be thrown away for the common good. Like, if it'll save humanity, any single person doesn't matter. Well, there's also the fact that, like, you have to, you have to admit, even federal fuck-me-in-the-ass person is probably better than Oh, no, future. and I mean, that's, that's, what he, that's what we learned in the episode where the, uh, the guy chickened out and uh, screwed up in his terrible, terrible plan. Uh, yep. And got thrown in jail. He's like, yeah, and he got over. Uh, he was overridden by someone who was just, you know, okay, whatever. Fu this is better than the future because everything is better than the future. Like nothing is nothing that can happen on Earth today is worse than the future. Which oof, no wonder people are uh, fleeing it. And uh, but let's before we get there, before we get to the episode where people are just fleeing it. Let's get back yeah. to that. Uh, let's get back to that episode about 9/11, which I've, I've got. I mean, uh, I guess my thing is to always find something to uh, address or com complain about in the world of travelers. But I'll mention it here, and I know this is a weird one. I'm not sure how they found Enrico Colantoni after he uh, uh, after he fled. He, um. It's actually mentioned, I believe, in the second episode. Um, basically, they say they found him um, via, you know, passing security footage. Oh, no, no, no. Um, I, I understand uh, the idea that that, but I'm just saying all they saw is a guy walk out of the World Trade Center. It's not like, uh, I, I just find it weird, the idea that they had such a good record of, because uh, I know they have very good records of the future, but I kind of assume they have very good records of the future after everything went digital and went to cell phones. Because the thing is, the, um, the, any footage of him, because you, you got to remember, no footage from the, uh, the World, Traders, uh, World Trade Center security cameras survived. That's why they just, that's why they grabbed the wrong guy. Because, you know, they couldn't, they couldn't know what happened right before the plane hit. There was no way to know that. And none of the actual security camera footage from within. And I got to think that in 2001, anything... Oh, damn it. Can I not shoot this? I thought it was a tripwire mine or something. But I guess I just it is. Shoot. You just need to... Oh, I... Yeah, I just... Fiddle around see. with it. Oh, there it is. There it is. It was hidden behind a... Uh... Yay! I mean, I still got hit, but it went, did go down. I didn't get far enough away. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but any security footage that would have captured him on it... Uh, would be would have been on videotape, right? And I just I don't know that I believe they have that in the future. No, but like they, given the size of the event, yeah. I figure they digitized a lot of it. Maybe, yeah. It's just uh, uh, the idea that you can say, oh, this one guy walked out as the planes were hitting. Well, a lot of people walked out as the planes were hitting, so the idea that they were able to identify that that's the guy who should have died, it just seems like a slight bit of a stretch. But you know I what? don't think so. Did you hear about that news story where a guy in China was um, fleeing, a, I think, a Man 1 charge? Um, he ends up, he's like, okay, if I'm in a crowd, I'll be fine. So yeah. he goes to a concert, and there's like 50,000 people there. And their super modern facial recognition technology plucked him right out of the crowd. Just crash. catches him arrested. immediately. Yeah, yeah. yeah because, he was arrested uh, in like forty minutes. Yeah. Or something because stupid. Because the honestly, uh, the the future por uh, portrayed by a little show called Purse of Interest is already the distant past. Like we've been living in that world for a while. It's called yep. China. <laughs> oh, China, you're the worst. But uh, not the worst. No, you're not the worst. Just... You're just terrible. Yeah. Well, anytime, anytime the president that. of a, uh, the, anytime the president of a country decides, yeah, I'm this country's new founding father. Uh, you need to put 
uh, you need to put it in the const that I can be president for life. You need to put it in the Constitution that all of my ideas are now the founding principles of our country. That's a problem. Because, uh, you know, you're not going to live forever, Xi Jinping, but I guess maybe you've got a son to take over for you because you want this to be a family dictatorship. Oh, well, it's not what worst. everyone aspires to. No, it's not what people aspire to. It's what villains aspire to. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's what super <laughs> villains aspire to. Yeah. But uh, I mean, uh, that's that's what George Bush wanted because he's like, hey, I killed John F. Kennedy in order to get here. I'm not just giving up this country without handing it over to my son Jeb Bush. And then, of course, we all saw how well that worked out. Yeah, how'd that work out for the Clintons? Yeah, well, I gotta say, the Clintons, uh, see, there's this one problem where America's still a democracy, so if you run the most hated woman in the country for president, she doesn't win. That's, that's the real problem. No matter oh. how much you cheat, lie, steal, bribe, and coerce. Like, no matter what you do, if you run the most hated woman in the country, it's gonna be hard for her to become president. Because, you know, people hate Hillary Clinton. Even more than they hated Donald Trump, which is weird, because people really hated Donald Trump. Yep. I mean, yeah, he's a worse president. That's, duh, he's uh, the worst at everything he does. I don't know. Hillary has a really extensive, proven track record of pretty gross incompetence. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely, but you're not, I mean, it's impossible to find a worse president <laughs> than him. It would Hillary honestly... Clinton. No, there's there's no way she would have been a worse president than Donald Trump. A, a less uh, competent president? Yeah, no, he literally has no idea what he's doing. Like, he's he's terrible yeah, at everything, in, uh, has no idea what he's doing. She was Secretary of State for ten years and had no idea what she was doing. <laughs> okay, she was Secretary of State for four years. And before that? Before that, she was a senator. Like. And before that? She was the first lady. That's not... You understand that those other ones aren't positions where you can do it. Yeah, she was in favor of the Iraq War. She did bad things. But you can't say she was in charge of diplomacy for ten years. Because that's just not accurate. Okay, fair. How about this? She's been a senior-level politician for ten years. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, but no one and would deny that. And what has she done in that time? Not much of note. Uh, no, she's done quite a few things of note. But they're all screw-ups. <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, you know what? We can we can do we can cover this on our Benghazi cast next week. Right now Sounds we're good. supposed to be focusing on travelers. <laughs> yes. Anyways, back back to the subject at hand. Yeah, but uh, you just I just want you to you're gonna lose a lot of people if you don't take a moment now to remember that Donald Trump is the worst president in American history. Just put no, that. There was out that there. guy. There was that guy who was new, who had pneumonia for 24 days and died. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I don't know. He uh, at least he at least he you know went out with some dignity. Uh, he didn't you know go out screaming and crying all the time the way Trump is doing. But anyway, uh, we were we were talking about travelers. He uh, did this wonderful. Uh, we did a wonderful thing to explain exactly who the bad guy in the present is, and it's Enrico Colantoni, and they spent an entire episode explaining why he's the bad guy. And I gotta say, I enjoyed the hell out of that. He's not even necessarily the bad guy. He's just sort of, like, he's this one refugee who's desperately trying to stay in the past. Yeah, he's not stay in trying the past. to fight. He's not trying to fight the director. No. And in the most chilling moment in the series so far, the director stops his war on Enrico Colantoni because I guess the director knows he has the potential to be useful now that there's a rogue faction. Like, they're about to in get into a gunfight and maybe get killed and maybe kill him. And the, di uh, the director sends messages to both Enrico and our team and says, all of you stand down and stop fighting each other. Yeah. We and... doggy. And this is the guy who's been, you know, uh, murdering traveler groups and walling them up inside <laughs> warehouses. Abandoned factories, yes. Jesus! <laughs> well, like, you can see how he's become, like, ultra-paranoid where he... Well, they murdered his wife and his business partner, so yeah. And all that, right? 
Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't think he's actually going after travelers. I just think he thinks that all travelers are after him. Oh, yeah, no, but I mean, there's there's not a lot of difference between that and going after travelers. Like, he For... is going after travelers. It's Functionally, just... there's no difference. Exactly. <laughs> You know, like, uh, whatever reason you're stepping on a bug, you're still stepping on a bug. And yes. he is not, uh, he is not worried about this. Uh, they, they, an interesting moral issue gets brought up this, in this group of episodes, because uh, they say they're, they're allowed to take over the FBI people, because they were all going to get blown up, but they were only going to get blown up because the machine was set to blow people up if it got tampered with. Yes. And it's like, well, that's kind of circular reasoning. And yeah, well, you know. Well, it's a show about time travel. Yeah. You need something circular. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. Well, we're going to get into causality at some point, probably, but we haven't yet. Yeah. Uh, it's going to, uh, we're going to see how that goes. Oh, look, it's the, but we're back with the guys from Halo 2. Seriously. These guys are so much like the villains from Halo 2. Although it's... those guys were openly gorillas in power armor, these guys just yep. have the body language of gorillas in power armor. They don't have fur. Um, but yeah, anyways. Yeah, uh, just a um, really great group of episodes. Not a good place to, like, this isn't a, a show where you could jump in at the start of Season 2. Although by doing the 9-11 episode, they made a strong argument for... Maybe this can be a way in for people. I still think you need to watch the first season. Yes. Pretty badly. Uh, I highly recommend it. Especially, yeah. also in other news, by the way, mm-hmm. uh, Counterpart Season 2 is currently being filmed. Oh, thank God. Um, they've got a couple of brand names. Okay. That are joining the cast. Such as... Because they said they were bringing in a special outsider to investigate, so we knew it was going to be a celebrity. Who is it? Do you want me to tell you? Of course I want you to. I'm going to find out when the episode starts. There's no reason not to tell me. Betty it... Gabriel. I have no idea who that is. I... You'd recognize her. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just when you said someone famous, I immediately thought, oh, famous, famous. But uh, that that name means nothing to me. Um, she was in, uh, Get Out. Oh, okay. All right, then. Neat. Yeah, that's, that's not a very famous person, though. Well. Just, just, I'm just saying, uh, lower your expectations, people. Uh, it's, well, it's a show that's cast J.K. Simmons and J.K. Simmons as the two top build. That's true. And, uh, that's why we love them. But um, also, I'm blanking on her name from, um, his wife is played by, what's her name from, uh, uh, oh god, this is terrible. Um, oh, oh wow, I hate it when your mind just goes blank. You know, the show about, um, Dollhouse, Dollhouse is the name of the show I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yeah, uh, there you the star go. of Dollhouse, the star of Dollhouse is on the show, and I'm not saying she's super famous, but I've seen her. In plenty of things. She's a brand named actor. She's not like a... Yeah. She's not the um, president's choice of actors. Exactly. She's not like the guy, you know, the everyone but Toby who works at the... uh, Everyone but Toby who works at the office. You know, it's like they're all just people. Maybe you've seen them once or twice, but it's not a big deal. Oh, we can go to Titan now. Nice. Way to go, the director. But yeah, Counterpart Season 2, it's going to be fantastic, and we know that because Counterpart was fantastic. Counterpart left us with so many cliffhangers. Yeah, it's nothing but cliffhangers. It's just cliffhanger after cliffhanger after cliffhanger, and it's going to get resolved. Uh, Well, we're going to find out how diseased Earth is, hopefully very quickly, because, oof, what an ending. Yeah, no, you're you're absolutely right about your theory. Like I can I can pretty much guarantee that that you're one hundred percent right about your theory. Okay, and uh, honestly, I can't wait. I've been actually thinking about. Um, I know, it's odd, but I'm moving soon, so I'm right. gonna have to wait till after that in order to watch Counterpart. Oh yeah, well again, it's not. It's not, <laughs> it's not a, 
Yeah, I mean, but you, you've got months and months before you have to do your rewatch of the first season. Oh, and Robert Ocampo's uh, joining it as well. That name is familiar. Try to remember why. I'll look him up later. But yeah, yeah. Um, uh, no, no, but I mean, you, you've got months. You, you want to get cut, unless you're planning on watching it, you know, four times, because I know you've already watched it twice. Yeah, uh, I want to watch it again because. I find that Counterpart is very much a show about details. Oh, yeah. No, no. They hide so much in the background, and there's cast-off uh, items. There's there's lo- there's sidelong looks. There's, like, little details you need to catch if you want to figure out what's going on. Yep. And that's what makes it the best show. So, yeah, I think there's still going to be a lot there to mine, and it's going to be good for you to have it fresh in your mind before we start Season 2, so you can pick out those really intricate details. Yeah, it's, it's going to be pretty exciting. Oh, hey, we're on a floating platform. Nice. Uh, so don't fall into the water. Also, this probably shouldn't be floating this much, but whatever. All right, we also watched the uh, the big sci-fi show that is uh, just going uh, going top top drawer every week, blowing people away. That's right, we watched The Expanse. Yes, we certainly did. And uh, I'm just going to say, to start off, almost nothing happened this week, uh, but that doesn't matter. Because... Um, we got Frankie back. <laughs> It was uh, it was one hell of a week on the Expanse, wasn't it? Well, Ooh. we got we got Bobby. Yep. Oh my God, having Bobby back, just walking around in her power armor. I've missed you so much, even though it's only been four episodes. <laughs> <laughs> it felt long. I swear to God, it felt longer than four episodes since she she's been stomping around in power armor. Right? Yeah, I know. And then we also got more Amos. Yeah, of course, more Amos. Oh God, with his, uh, with his, you know, a little more window into his terrifying worldview, which is, you know, what you want out of, uh, which is what you want out of Amos. It's what we, it's what we come to for Amos. You know, you're always doing the smart thing, whether or not it feels right at the time. And uh, I just love that his plan is, oh, let's just ram him. What the hell? Yeah. Like okay. if we get ca- if we get caught, they're taking the ship and they're throwing us in jail forever. So we got to make our play. Like we just got to try it. We don't yep. have any other options. Sitting here and waiting to get captured isn't a good option. I'm like, damn <laughs> Let's right. Let's put it like this. It all ends the same. I know. <laughs> oh, how good is that? You know, we're going out no matter what. So well, might as let's put might like as this. Well try. Once they figure out. Who Amos is? Yeah. Yeah, let's put it like this. <laughs> Things oh, would not go well for him. Oh. Well yeah, I mean he's got that he's got that record from Baltimore that's always sitting there right, that's always sitting there ready to undo everything he's tried to do. Well that's just it. It's um I I'm not gonna give away no, any no. details of this. Of course not. Because it's it's just too good. But yeah. um he mentioned it, it's brought up, I think, two or three episodes ago. It's something major that you don't quite realize at the time where he goes, you know, the uh, blind dude walks up to him when he's hitting on him and goes, oh, hey, by the way, um, we checked the records and you said yeah, you're the, from Baltimore. Uh, yeah, yeah, the prime lord from Baltimore with that name. He's yeah, like, yeah, he, it's a pretty common name. Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I couldn't have been him. I was 15 I when was I signed 15 up. I was 15 when I left the planet, remember? Yeah. Nothing nothing to do with me. <laughs> I'm like, oh, damn, I'm going to love this novella, aren't I? Yeah, you s- I really it's absolutely am. the best of the six I've read. Okay. Oof. It's so good. But, yeah. Um, it was, and we got more peaches. Yeah. Oh, God, she's the worst. But I know that's her job. She's I know not- being the worst is her job. And I know she's got reasons to be the way she is, but Jesus, stop murdering people for your dad. Ugh. Like, you're just, she I mean, your is daddy is... issues. I she, know. She, like, she's the avatar. She's the living incarnation of daddy issues. Like, your dad belongs where he is. He's the worst. Stop killing people for him. Like, uh, 
Although, they, I gotta say, the way they shot it, I guess she hasn't killed her sister's friend yet? It seems like she's about to kill her when everything goes zero gravity? Like, it was yeah, a little tough to tell exactly what was happening. it was pretty dangerously close on that one. Oh, no. It, it was really close, but visually it wasn't 100% clear, and I'm waiting for next week to see how that plays out. But uh, it was it was still fantastic. Like, what is this glowy thing on the ground? Is that a thing? Oh, no, I don't need to pick that up. That's just a thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are those are, are those grenades, and if I use my grenades, I can pick that up? No, these uh, uh, no. little glowing oh, balls. Oh, those are the orbs of light. Yes, and they, they charge, charge up your superpower. Super right, yes, which, you know, I might as well use my superpower for once. I keep forgetting to use it, which is not good. Uh, Take yeah. that, you jerk. I just, I get stuck in the regular fighting, so it never occurs to me, like, go, uh, to go third person and start using powers. Also, I missed my golden gun. I don't know, I feel... I I'm one of those guys, I suffer from greater health potion syndrome. Oh yeah, you always leave them stocked up in your inventory. I gotcha. I'm yep. just, I'm just gonna save this super until I absolutely need it, and then like, and oh, then you, the boss is then dead. You end, Whoops. Yep, you end Baldur's Gate with like <laughs> 95 greater health <laughs> potions <laughs> in your inventory. Yeah, we've all been there. <laughs> oh my god, it's such a bad habit to get into. But that being said, I don't know that I've ever run out of a health potion, so my plan is working. Uh, yeah, I'm in the same boat, but that's also because after years and years of Dungeons and Dragons abuse. Yeah, you, you know what to expect. Well, beyond that, who was stuck being the healer? Oh, uh, okay. There so I, I'm just like, fuck it. I'm a cleric in real life. I might as well. <laughs> might as well own it. Right. I get that. Yep. Um, in my last D&D &D run, I was actually both the healer and the tank. Wow. Well, you can slap a lot of armor on clerics. I think that's fine. That's that exactly what they did. They're like, yeah. okay. Yeah. If you're the healer, we can't have you getting killed by a lightning bolt. Put another layer of plate over that. Just use that maximum dexterity, that elven dexterity. I know you don't have the greatest constitution, but we don't care. Here's plate <laughs> armor. Good luck. <laughs> oh, that's, that's pretty fantastic. I like that logic. <laughs> But yeah, it's um, it's really great. We got some wonderful stuff with peaches. We got uh, the we got the chaplain uh, doing the worst job ever at being a chaplain, and immediately getting called on it when someone kills himself because of yes. existential space madness. I have to admit, there would be a certain amount of existential space madness. Oh yeah, no, no. I mean, covering uh, coming in contact with what we found is a. Uh, a super advanced, and we, we got, I mean, we got the word this week, it is a super advanced civilization from billions of years ago. Like, that's the word we got, and we have no reason to think that uh, Joe was lying. Because why would he, I mean, yes, he could be lying, but in this situation, there's no, we were given no reason to believe that what Joe was saying isn't anything but the truth. Because, uh, you know, let's face it, it's not like telling him that it's a super advanced civilization that built all this stuff billions of years ago. And now, you know, that I, I liked, what was it, that he left, you know, um, that, you know, all they left behind was a bunch of locked doors. Is that how it went? But just that, yeah. that image, I mean, it's like an entire thing built out of locked doors. And it's your job to open them. And I'm like, yeah, I like that idea. I like that idea a lot. Where it's like, what that um, oof, like basically, and I, I'm gonna, you're gonna not like me for saying this. Yeah. It's like we've been, we've walked into someone else's house and we found their Siri. <laughs> <laughs> or we've or we found their Alexa, and that's basically what the ring is. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's nice. <laughs> And you're like, oh, that's pretty nice. imagine being a caveman and walking into someone's house and being like, hey, Alexa. Yeah, and having to figure out what to say, but once you start saying stuff, you're like, oh my god. What am I and doing? When, as you start figuring out that noises you make are controlling the cave you're in. Yeah. That's, that, that's going to be pretty freaky. And it's going to take some getting used to, which is what he's going through right now. And we get another exploded person. 
uh, it pulled that nonsense again, turning... Although, weird, th weirdly, this time it absorbed someone into itself? Well, we know uh, that the proto-molecule essentially runs on that. biomatter. Yeah, and it absorbed right? him and used it for fuel, which was super creepy, uh, but quite a nice visual. It made up for the much less impressive visual of the uh, the Earthican ship going through the ga uh, going into the bubble, which did not look fantastic. Uh, not all yeah. the space stuff is going to look fantastic. I'm like, okay, I'm watching this, and it honestly feels a little like I'm watching Babylon Five. And Babylon Five had really great special effects for 1994, but mm -hmm. this this isn't looking great. I don't know how they screwed up the lighting in this scene or what happened, but yeah, it looks really really janky. Yeah, and it's like it was the first time I'd really noticed that on the show, but now that I find out about their budget difficulties in season uh, three, it kind of makes sense because they spent a lot of money on that first half of the season, so it makes well, sense to me. It's because but... sci-fi hasn't quite figured out like how to make the expanse work yeah they don't know how to sell like, it so well beyond beyond that it's like okay so when's the season one finale midway yeah, no, through yeah. season two <laughs> where's the season two for the alley the halfway point of season three where else oh okay yeah and i think that's like, they, they, I mean, would you look at that season, though? When you look at the first half of season three, they spent so much money on all of those new ships, all of the CG for those new ships. They had all of those new set to build. They had huge casts, which had a surprisingly large number of speaking parts. Like, it wasn't cheap. There is a reason that the second half of season three has spent a lot of time in the same three sets with almost no people. And it's paying for the first half of season three. But the problem is, that has led to a situation where that visual happens. Where this not great at all visual is the result. And again, yep. I don't want to criticize the show too much, because I love the show, and I can overlook some bad special effects, but we had bad special effects this week, and it's the first time in the show I've really noticed a bad special effect. I think that's one of the things that's actually kind of driving me to... Um... To, to buy it on iTunes, because I know that in post, they're going to fix it. <laughs> you think they're going to fix it going forward? I think they would, especially since they got all those sweet, sweet Amazon dollaroos. Yeah, I guess we'll see. I mean, it'd be nice, because you can always plug in new special effects like they did with um, uh, Star Trek. Releasing Star Trek with uh, entirely redone visuals, and I rewatched all the original Star Trek, and the redone visuals don't clash with the look of the show at all. It just it looks less like there's a you know model hanging on a string. I yeah. know it wasn't hanging on a string, and it was standing on a pedestal. You don't have to tell me. Uh, but um, where, where are we supposed to go? Oh, is that door opening? Yeah. Oh, okay. I guess we had to plot-wise wait for the door to open, or we both had... No, we didn't both have to be there, because you opened it. But yeah. anyway. Uh, but yeah. Um, they went back and they fixed that, and I feel like they went back and they redid some of the animation for Babylon 5 as well. They when did. it went widescreen, and it looked better. So, I could see them doing that. I've seen no evidence that they're going to do that. Uh, although, you know, as you said, Amazon might just put up the cash just so it all looks consistent. I, well, uh, Amaz it wouldn't shock me if Amazon did that. Well, beyond the fact that Jeff Bezos himself is a fan of the show. A big fan of the show. Yeah. yeah. Um, just the fact that you have an absolutely rabid fan base. Yeah, who will pay for it. Yeah, if, you sa if he said, listen, we're going to put it up on Amazon Prime for you to own the show. Yeah. If X amount of people buy it, we're going to fix the uh, thing. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to increase the visuals, you know, in 24 hours would be done. Yeah. Okay. You, you make a strong point. <laughs> I could totally see them doing, I could totally see being willing to do that. I'd be willing to pay for the show. So yeah. Okay. I am totally willing to pay for the show, but again, I mean, I'm, I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm already paying for the show. I mean, cause I have Amazon prime. So there you go. Yeah. Although I like to think of that as paying for the counterpart in tick and everything else is just, you know, Grave. Counterpart is not on Amazon. Oh, no, it's on Crave. You're right. Damn it. Because it's a showcase show. I get confused about which my uh, which services I have. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. 
that's, well, that's, that's the thing. Me. Here in the Soviet Republic of Kanakistan, we have we don't have Hulu. No. We yeah. don't have any sort of real way to amalgamate it. If you're watching no. on an Apple TV, navigating Amazon Prime is the stuff of nightmares. A nightmare coupled with a bitch. No, it'll haunt. It'll scar your dreams, and haunt your nightmares for weeks. <laughs> All right, so let's get to the big ending of the episode, though, which okay. was uh, he has a vision. He goes back and he sees everything that happened to the ring in reverse order. Yes. And then we get this weird image that we get two images that need to be explained. And I know you can explain them to me, but, but don't. I shouldn't. You yes. You won't, though. Uh, image one is a bunch of like uh, a dead space with a bunch of different bubbles that you can see a universe or a galaxy inside of that are blinking out, which is very strange. Two is a beam hitting the sun, turning it blue and making it explode. Those are some pretty jarring and alarming images. So I'm not even going to like... I, I don't even know how I could guess what this is going to mean. Like, I can't imagine it's designed to destroy the sun. Why would you build a thing to destroy the sun? That seems crazy to me. But I also have no idea what that could mean otherwise. Unless it's warning us about a threat someone else poses to the sun, although that seems like a stretch. So, yeah. Is it is it possible that the ring exists to go to other planets and uh, wipe out systems based on a certain criteria? Maybe. Like, that, it is possible that that's what that means. I can't say for sure, though. All I know is that's one of the most chilling things an epi images an episode has left us with since the show has started. And this is a show where kids got turned into monsters. And an entire and star... literally disassembled nurses. <laughs> yeah, disassembled people. Uh, oh, and let's not forget, uh, had, a, had an episode where an entire space station per, uh, full of people got turned into, you know, blue bioluminescent goo, glue, goo. So yeah, like this After is a show... After dying of radiation poisoning. After dying of radiation poisoning. So yeah, like this is a show that has largely uh, been full of chilling imagery, just as a rule. So I'm not surprised that this has happened, but I still wasn't expecting something that bleak to turn up. And I'm very intrigued to see where it goes next. Hopefully I won't have to wait too long, but don't tell me. <laughs> I've, I've been sitting here being quiet, haven't I? Alright, good. Just you keep it that way. Uh, seriously, though, just from a visual standpoint, as someone who's read the books, did did you appre like did you at least find those visuals satisfying? I did. Yeah. Um. Well, I I the other thing I did enjoy was I said this in first season. I said in second, the casting is phenomenal. Right. Because Wes Chatham really is like. A pretty good Amos. Yeah, no, and he's Ar fantastic. And yeah. no one could have played Ars Fala, except for no, of course. That I like. It's it's one of those things where it's like, was was it written with her in mind after seeing that season of Twenty Four? You know, like did someone see her season of Twenty Four and be like, I'm gonna write a part for her in the future? Well, that's because the thing. I don't know because these were all I... written in the mid two thousands, right? Oh yeah, like the first. I think two, three seasons were fairly solid. But after it started becoming Jack Bauer is walking around Los Angeles torturing people for 24 hours. I'm just like... Oh, yeah, no, no. It uh, Season four was the last good season of 24. And it won bet. And the thing is, that was a... That was actually just a great season of television. The fourth season. Uh, that was the one where The Mummy was the villain. And uh, it was fantastic, and it was just a fantastic season of television. Uh, three was kind of a disaster. Two was two was good. Like the first season was just a really great spy show. Season and... two was still good. Three complete disaster on every level, and then four they got it back before the show just became irrelevant. 
Well, beyond that, it also became torture porn. Like it I, did. It really, really did. Like I got it got to the point where I was like, listen, I came to watch a spy thriller. Yeah. I've been I watched it season one. And season one was they had a little bit groundbreaking of television. It was. It was nothing else like it. But with um the further it got from that what the hell? Fell off a cliff? Alright, well that's ridiculous. That's impressive. I didn't even know there was a cliff there. Although I had been blinded by a flashbang, so that is why I didn't know there was a cliff there. Yeah. But yeah, but the point is, like, whether or not you like the show, she was great on her season, and it made me think that, you know, maybe they had her, the writers had her in mind all along. Since it's not like this is an ancient book series from the 70s that they've just now rediscovered and are bringing to TV. Like, yeah. this is a This is a going concern. This is a recent series that's still being written as the show is happening. I'm actually not sure when it came out. Okay, well, it's not hard to find out. Yeah. But uh, it wouldn't shock me. Like, she's perfect. Amos is great. Uh, what do you call it? I really like the guy playing Alex. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's he's just so endearing because he's so... Uh, he's in so his own way. So weirdly homespun. Yeah. Well, no, he is. He's, he's a down-home kind of guy. And in his own way, he's the most conflicted... Um, He's the most conflicted one of them because, and this is what I find so fascinating about his character, he's the only one who theoretically had a home he could have gone back to. That's a complicated issue. That... It is, but the, yeah. and I'm, I'm sure it's more complicated in the books, but the way the show has presented it is, like, he needed space. He needed to be out there. And yes. everyone no, else... That's, that's is... fairly accurate. Yeah, yeah, and everyone else has a cho uh, like has no choice. Like for whatever reason, the life they were living didn't. For many reasons, different for every character, the life they were leading didn't work out for them, and space was where they ended up. And it, I mean, honestly, for the kind of people they are, it's the it's the right thing for them to have done. But it is like a, the everything they're doing is a last resort type of situation, whereas uh... Alex could have gone home. Um, that's not necessarily true in two other cases. Um, in the case of Bobby, Bobby yeah. does does have a well, home. Well, Bobby's not Bobby's not part of the team yet, so Bobby's not a good example because she hasn't chosen to be a part of the team yet. Uh, you know, she's not she's not on the crew as of this part of the show. Yes. So I'm just talking about the core cast we have now, and I'm not answering that phone call. So just, I'll shut it down. Yeah, that's it's your what I wife. Did. Just FYI, it's your wife. Yeah, I know, because she just okay. tried to call me. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should take that as a hint. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure All when right. she clues in. Yeah. yeah, no, okay, she'll she'll figure it out. Uh, but seriously though, uh, <laughs> we had a. Uh, it was a. Um, I, I love the characters. Like, one minor thing of special effects that didn't blow me away aren't yeah. enough to stop calling this the best sci fi show on television since Babylon 5 and Deep Space Nine. It's, it's that good. It's so yeah. much better than Battlestar ever was. There is like, something even I Battlestar would like to bring before up, Battlestar went nuts. Yeah. Bring it up. They've made Drummer a significantly more um, important character. Okay. Which I, I do like, because turns out later on in the book she is pretty important. Oh, um, so they've made it, so they've made her big now, rather than just have her be like the face tattoo guy who keeps showing up until he's relevant. Yeah. Um, yeah, Diego. Yeah, uh, Diego, thank you. I, complete for, I keep forgetting face tattoo guy's name. Yeah. But in terms of... Um, Characters. There's one character who I basically dislike the entire time. Yeah. In the books, Naomi. Yeah. Okay. Naomi. How are you liking her on the show? Still don't like her. They're trying to make her more <laughs> sympathetic because the fans yeah, the, really the fans love, love the belt. Her. Yeah, they love the belt. They love the belters. You know. Oh my god, uh, but you, you could never get on board her, like, her essentially IRA extremist backstory. 
Oh, yes, they did cover some of it. Okay. Not a, not a huge amount of it, but yeah. So you don't uh, know exactly what happened yet? No, not exactly. But Would you like me to had, tell you? Had, no, I, I'll read the books, or it'll come up on this show. Yes. But uh, uh, I'm, I'm committed to reading the books the second I get super frustrated about having to wait for the next season. <laughs> Just like with Game of Thrones. At some point, I'm going to break down and read all the books. It's fine. Um, but yeah, it's... Ooh, we doggy. Uh, one thing, though. Uh, this is something I forgot to mention last time, and I'm going to mention it now uh, because it made me so happy uh, when it happened. And we talked about the events surrounding this scene, but we didn't talk about the scene specifically. All right, uh, so I, I went off on this thing last time about how the, mes the sub-message of the show is don't try to do something fancy in space to impress a woman because that is going to get you killed. Yep. Because that's happened three times now. And every time it's been great, but don't do it. Uh, but anyway, so the guy finding out his lady's cheating on him because he wants to go out and be a space racer. And she's just like, yeah, you could have just stayed here, though. Yep. Uh, so he gets super depressed and he lies in his thing and he turns on a song. And that song is uh, all by myself, but it's being sung in the Belter language. And the, the Belter language is so primitive and has so few words. The song has become, I'm all alone. <laughs> that made me so happy. The Belter language isn't primitive. It's a polyglot. Yeah. But uh, it also, it clearly does not have the kind of nuance and uh, the kind of nuance and availability of language that English, or whoops, <laughs> That English or Chinese have, has, you know? Yeah, uh, even though uh, both are in there. Both are in there, but they clearly just don't have this huge vocabulary. Where the hell is this second converter? It's up here. Oh, it's okay. I just can't get higher. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's a place to get higher, but, you know, you can fly. And I keep yeah. missing this jump. You need to, yeah, jump up to that second platform. Oh, jump okay, up. and then walk over to where you are. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. I gotcha, I gotcha, I gotcha. But yeah, so um, once again, we're going to spend a week saying you, you need to keep watching Expanse. If you haven't been watching Expanse, start watching Expanse, and then keep watching Expanse. Go buy the books. We've only got, I think, three, two or three episodes left. Uh, uh, I believe three. Okay, three. So it is a 13-episode season. So we got three more weeks of this, and then we're really going to have to discuss what we're watching after that. Because three, episode, three more se episodes of this, we're watching three uh, Travelers a Week as well. So we're going to be running out of both shows at roughly <laughs> the same time. Yeah. So that, that's going to lead to some hard conversations <laughs> next month. Uh, but you know what? We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, first off, though, I uh, just uh, want to say, do we have a quiz? Yes. We All have right, an Expanse quiz. Ooh, I love those. God damn it! What's I'll the name of Bobby's nephew? Is fine. I have no idea, and now I'm psyched to find out. All right. Uh, yeah, be the first commenter below the video to be able to name Bobby's nephew. You win a prize. That being a game from one of our collections of Steam codes that we haven't used ourselves. Yes. Uh, so check that out. Um, all right. Uh, is there something you want to remind people to uh, watch or play? Um, counterpart, if you haven't watched already, then you're dumb and I hate you. Um, <laughs> hey, this applies to my wife. Okay. Um, there you go. Uh, beyond that, I would highly suggest people get into RimWorld. We're finally getting the 1.0 release of RimWorld. Wow, that's neat. Way to go. Yep. I'm that's playing the, cool. the beta, and it's weird and interesting. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's a very fascinating series. Uh, uh, not series, it's a very fast... Um, it has had a very fascinating development, is what I'm trying to say. Yep. And it has, they have been putting out meaningful content for updates for a long time, and I'm glad it's finally hitting 1.0. So, way to go, RimWorld. Um, we fantastic. have also beta 1.2 for, guess what? I can't, possibly. Battletech. Really? Yes. 
Oh, fantastic. I can't wait to see what the updates are. I just finished the campaign last night after, like, lollygagging through Torian space for a month. Oof. Oh, I can't wait. But yeah, it's, uh, Battletech is the best. I can't stress that enough. Um, for me, if you've got a VR helmet, there's this thing called, uh, Sacralith that I recommend you pick up. It's for Vive only, I think. Well, it might have Oculus. You can check that. But I don't know that it has Windows Mixed Reality. The point is, it is a um, motion-controlled bow and arrow simulator that I don't know that how they've managed to fix my shaky hands and make it compatible with the world, but it is the best I've ever done at a bow and arrow game because it, it's got auto-aiming in there that doesn't feel like auto-aiming. Either that or I've gotten a lot better in bow and arrows. I definitely haven't. So I don't know how they're tweaking it just right to make it feel fantastic, but they've made it feel fantastic. It's called Sacralith, and I recommend you try it. Dope. It's going to be cool. So next week on the show, we're going to be playing either this or maybe we'll swap out for Dead Rising 4 since we both had Dead Rising 4. Yep. And I'm itching to try the campaign, on, uh, the campaign co-op thing. On that one, maybe Dead Rising 3, where you can play the full cam. Uh, Dead Rising 4, I think, has a, cam a co op mode, whereas Dead Rising 3, you can just play the whole campaign on co op, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so, we're going to talk about that going forward, right? And um, after that, we're also going to be pl talking, of course, about, and this is where if you want to get caught up to be with us, we're going to be talking about Expanse 311, and we're going to be talking about uh, Travelers. 304 to 306, uh, 204 to 206. So that's Expanse 311, Travelers 204 to 206. Oh yeah, it's gonna be. We're it's in gonna for some. Uh, yeah, it's, we're in. It it's gonna get good because I mean, this next episode they've got to find out that people are just stealing bodies, and that's gonna. Oh, I can't wait to find out how that plays I, out. I do know how the season will end. Well, don't say a word. Is this a prediction, or do you know? This is a prediction. Okay. Based on having already watched... No, I'm teasing. All right, what is your no. prediction? Uh, it's going to end with a bombing. Okay. Oh, to do a mass transforming. No. Oh, really? It's going to end specifically with a bombing, and it'll be a callback to late season two, early season three. Do you... Wait... Again, which, uh, uh, you mean late season one, early season two? No. Because you can't have a call back to something that hasn't happened yet. In We're in season the expanse. two of Travelers. Okay, you see, I was talking about Travelers. Oh, I was talking about said, The Expanse, because I yeah, know how you didn't the make that. <laughs> You didn't see how you see how that wasn't clear at all, right? Because yes. I was talking about travelers, and then you said, "I know how the season's going to end." No, you, um, you, see, you see the issue there, right? Yes, I do. That was okay, my bad. <laughs> um, no, but I do know how. No, no, I, I understand. Okay. Yep. Um, but yes, and you know what? Well, I can't wait to get there. Honestly, I really can't wait to get there. So uh, that's that. I have been the hidden object guru, and I am, as always the gun wrangler thanks for joining for us for this we'll see you back here next time but until then au revoir